Yo, what's good guys? It's Austin here, or Luna. So today's story time, in my opinion, is one of the scariest stories I've ever told. So this story time takes place in 2017, okay? Now at the time, I was renting this house in my hometown for a little bit, just for a few months. I had some close friends staying there with me, and it was basically just me and a bunch of my hometown friends living together for a while. Now the first month and a half of staying together was completely fine, it was a lot of fun, there wasn't any problems at all, but sadly things started to take a turn for the worst when we started having a lot of people over that we didn't know that well, like my friends would invite people that they knew over, and long story short, we just kind of had a lot of people come over over time, and from that happening, the address kind of made its way out there to, you know, people that we didn't know that well, so basically the address got leaked, okay, and I found this out because one day I woke up and I checked my phone and I usually go through my Twitter DMs. And in my requests, I had a DM from a guy with this creepy profile picture. I'll put it on the screen. And he DM'd me and was like, hey, man, saw your house last night. And it's just a picture of my house in the dark. And it wasn't some Google image photo of it at nighttime. It was a legit, like, standing in the street iPhone photo of my house at night. And I knew it was recent because it had my friend's car in the driveway. So I was like, okay, shit, like, this isn't good. This isn't good. Now, his face wasn't in the photo. It was just, you know, like a photo of the house itself. So I had no idea who this was. And obviously the Twitter was just created. So I had no clue who this could be. So honestly, I just ignored it. I thought it was a friend of ours messing with us because, you know, it wouldn't be the first time that a friend tried to scare us. So I ignored it. I didn't even say anything about it. I really just thought it was a friend. Now, later that night, I get another DM from that account saying, Austin, don't ignore me. Now, at this point, I started to get a little bit worried. So I tell my friend about it. I'm like, yo, there's this account. I thought it was someone here messing with us, but... I think it's an actual person that's, like, stalking me. So I showed him the DMs, and he was like, yo, that's creepy. Like, I don't know who that is. That's weird. So I showed everyone else in the house the DMs, and they all agreed that it was just super creepy, and they all said it wasn't them. So I blocked the account on Twitter, because I was like, yo, I'm not going to entertain this. If I see this dude outside the house at all, though, I'm going to call the police. And I also reported his account to Twitter, because he was being creepy and a stalker. So yeah, I reported the account, and I didn't hear anything from him for two days. Like, I just ignored him the rest of those two days, I got no other DMs, and I thought that was the end of it, right? And I woke up on day three, and I saw his account was suspended. So then I really thought it was the end of it. I was like, alright, great, like, he's gone, he probably won't even make a new one, like, it's over. But then I checked my DMs, and I see that he made a new account with the same profile pic, and it says, You can't get rid of me, Austin. And this time, it's a photo of our house in the daytime. So I quickly go to the other room where all my friends are. I'm like, yo, look at this. Like, he's still going at it. I got him suspended. And he's sending me more photos of the house. This time it's in the day. And all my friends were like, yo, we got to be on the lookout tonight. Like, if we see this dude, let's grab him and call the police. And then I said, I was like, yo, that's probably a bad idea. Like, we shouldn't try and, like, go up to him or anything. We should just call the cops because he might have a weapon. And my friends were all like, yeah, good idea. Like, we won't do that. So I reported his Twitter again, and I blocked him, and I thought, like, all right, hopefully he just goes away. Like, I don't want any more creepy photos of my house. I don't want any more creepy DMs. Like, hopefully he'll just stop. So I blocked him. I reported his account again. I thought that would be the end of it. And then everything went quiet for a few days, which was really nice. I thought that it was finally over. Like, we went three whole days without any creepy DMs. You know, my friends didn't see anybody outside the house. They kept checking. We even ordered a security camera online that would be coming in in a few days. So things were looking up, you know? We felt pretty safe at this point. We thought it was over with. And then randomly, on the fourth night, I'm laying down on my bed on my phone about to go to sleep. It was like 3 in the morning. And I get a DM from a random Twitter account, of course, with the same photo. I knew it was him. And it was a DM with a photo attached. It was a photo of our house at night. And it says, hey, Austin, I'm back again. So at this point, I know this dude's outside the house. So I run into my friend's room. I'm like, yo, yo, like, look, I just got this DM. He's outside. So we all just run down the stairs full speed to the front door. There was like 10 of us in total. And we swing open the front door. We run outside. And there's no one out front. And we're like, yo, what? Like, where is he? Where is he? So we run to the backyard. And the house that we were staying at was on a lake. So behind our house was a huge beach, and we ran back there, and we're like checking the entire beach, we're looking for somebody, we can't find anyone. So after that, we give up, we quickly run back inside, we lock all the doors, and we sit down in my friend's room, and I go on my phone, and I'm just waiting for a DM. Like, pretty much all of us are just waiting for this guy to DM me again, and be outside. That way we can either find out if it's a creepy stalker, or a friend of ours, because we still really had no idea who this could be. So we're waiting, we're just sitting there waiting, and waiting, and there's no DM. But I didn't want to DM this guy. In case he was a stalker, I didn't want to egg him on, you know what I mean? Like, I didn't know what he was capable of. So I'm just, you know, just sitting there. And we sit there for like a whole hour, and there's nothing. 
and a bunch of my friends end up falling asleep. And I was way too anxious to sleep, and so were a couple of my other friends. So we went into my room, and we just sat in there all night, just watching TV, checking the window every 10 minutes, just trying to make sure that no one's out front staring at the house. And this was definitely the most nervous I've probably ever been in a long time. I was super anxious. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know if it was a friend playing a really long prank on me. I didn't know if there was a real stalker that we had. I didn't know what this dude wanted. It was just all in all a really, really scary situation. And all my friends were pretty freaked out as well. Besides a couple. A couple of my friends just didn't care. They thought it was a big joke. But most of us were pretty scared. So the next day is when everything changed, okay? The next morning we wake up. I was pretty sleep deprived. I only slept for like three hours because I was really anxious. So when I woke up, I immediately checked my phone and my Twitter DMs, and surprisingly, this guy didn't DM me at all the rest of the night, so that was kind of a good thing, it kind of made me less anxious, but I still knew that it wasn't over. Like, every time I thought it was over, it just started back up again, so I didn't want to get this, you know, thought in my head that it was done with. So I get out of bed, I go downstairs, my friend's making breakfast, and pretty much everybody's sitting in the kitchen, and my friend's got a baseball bat next to him, and I'm like, yo, why do you have that? He's like, bro, I'm just waiting for this dude to come back. Like, it could be at any moment, night or day. And when he does, I'm prepared. I'm like, all right, shit. So, yeah, I sit down. I eat some breakfast with my friends. And we just kind of wait for the nighttime to come along. Because that's really when this dude seemed to come out. So, me and all my friends pretty much went out for the day. And we came back at about 9 o'clock at night. And we waited. And we just hung out inside until about 12, 1 a.m. And at 1 a.m., we decided to go outside and just sit on our porch all night. And just wait and see if he comes by. So, we sit out there. We're listening to music, just talking, and all of a sudden we see from like far down the street this dude in like a black hood, and he has all black clothes on. So when I see this, I'm like, yo, that might be him, like it actually might be. And he comes up to the house, and then he sees us all sitting on the porch, and he hears the music, and he turns around and starts bolting down the street full speed. Like he just ran away from us so fast. So literally all of us start running after him, like we're all chasing him, because it was 10v1, like we really didn't think that this dude could take us all. So we run full speed towards this dude. We're chasing him down the street. And my friend who takes track caught up first, of course. And he tackles him and gets him to the ground. And we get up to him. And I shit you not, this dude is wearing a Spider-Man mask. And I'm like, yo, what? And my friend rips the mask off. And it felt like a Scooby-Doo episode when we found out who this dude was. So the person that was behind the mask that was sending me those DMs, being a stalker, was this kid that we all went to high school with. He went to our school for ninth grade only, and then he got transferred out to another school. And the thing about him was, is he had a mental disability. So when we realized it was him, we obviously took the situation a lot differently. And we asked him, we're like, yo, like, why are you outside our house all these nights? Like, what are you doing? He's like, I don't know. I, I just, I see your videos, Austin. I thought it'd be funny. And I'm like, dude, that's not funny. Like, don't do that. And I asked him, I'm like, you don't have any weapon on you, right? He's like, nah, I don't. So what we end up doing is we walk him back to his house because he lived like a block away. And we tell his mom about it because we're like, hey, like, he wanders off at night and he's coming outside our house and sending me weird DMs. Like, it's not okay. And his mom was like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. Like, I'll keep an eye on him. I'm so sorry. Thank you for not calling the police. Like, he doesn't know better. And we all understood that. And after we talked to his mom with him, he kind of understood that it wasn't right to be doing that. And he told me he wouldn't do it again. And he apologized. So basically, yeah, he was trying to play a big joke on us. But in reality, it looked really, really scary and like he was a stalker, which he kind of was for a minute. But in the end, he understood that it was wrong, and he stopped, and that's all that matters. Everything was okay, everybody was good, he didn't do that anymore, and that was pretty much the end of that story time, okay? Moral of the story is, don't do that, ever. It's never okay to stalk people. But yeah, guys, hope you enjoyed this story time. I thought it was a pretty crazy one. If you did enjoy it, please leave a like on the video. I really appreciate it. Feel free to leave your story times in the comments down below, and subscribe if you're new. I'll see you guys all later. Peace. Cut ties, move to LA on a bus ride.